Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration with my friend Danny. I hope you'll stick around, see what our theme is this month, and see the projects I created. I want to say a great big welcome back to my subscribers and regular viewers and if this is your first time to my channel I hope that by the end of this video you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and maybe even tap on that bell for notifications. Like I mentioned in the intro it is time for another 4 on Friday collaboration. If 4 on Friday is new to you let me tell you a little bit about it. Each month my friend Danny and I share 4 projects that use the same tool technique or product. Then I share my creations here on my YouTube channel and she shares hers on her blog. Her blog post is linked in the description box below so make sure once you're done watching my video that you go check out see what she made and leave her some love. I'm gonna give you a second here to look at my cards today and see if you know what our theme is for the month. Any guesses? If you couldn't tell by the cards or by the title, this month we are doing embossing folders. Now what I have in front of me here is actually since I have purged some embossing folders. It was one of my favorite things to buy when I first started paper crafting and to this day I cannot resist a good embossing folder. So all of the cards that you just saw were created using embossing folders. Here in just a little bit I'm going to start the process of each video. The processes themselves will be voiced over, so if I don't answer a question that you have, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's go ahead and get crafty. For my first card, I'm gonna be using this wood grain embossing folder from the Paper Studio, and I will be inking up one side of this in sepia archival ink. My sentiment is going to be Missing You from this Kelly Create set and I will be stamping that in Versamark and embossing it with white detail embossing powder. Because I am going to emboss it, I did get out my little embossing buddy as well. For my papers, I have a strip of dark red that is five and a quarter by one and a quarter. I have a scrap of craft card stock that is five by three and a half a scrap of white cardstock that is four and a quarter by three. I will be using this white cardstock to mat my craft piece when it's done. And this is four and a half by three and a quarter. And then finally, I have a craft top folding A2 card base. For this first card, I will be using my sepia ink on the embossing folder itself. I will be wiping this across the part that is embossed not the debossed part because I want the very fine lines that go down into the craft paper to be what takes the ink so I use a little scotch blue tape there to hold my craft cardstock piece in place and then I ink up that folder this gets sent through my cuddle bug just like any other time with an embossing folder but when I reveal this you'll see that the ink is now pushed down into all of those little indentations. It looks a lot different than if you flip it over and look at the back. This next part is something you've seen me do often on my channel where I make kind of a wood floor background but with the inking of that embossing folder and adding the texture to the craft cardstock these turn out looking almost like real wood boards. Here I am just using my Fiskars photo trimmer to cut that embossed piece into half inch wide strips. To give it a more antiqued look, just like usual, I am inking up the edges of each of these boards. And here's a look at the difference. It's subtle, but you can tell, and it definitely makes a difference when you do the pattern later. Off camera, I added some Xyron adhesive to my small white cardstock piece, and this is gonna be what I lay the boards onto. So it is just a sheet of adhesive now. I start by placing my first board about a third of the way 
into the card and then I snip off that excess. This piece then gets flipped around so the two inked edges go together and it gets butted right up against that and laid across the rest of the card. Now I do go ahead and cut off the excess here but you could wait until the end to do all that. My second plank, it goes a third of the way in from the left and then I do the same thing. I snip off the extra, flip it around so the inked edges butt up against each other and now it's time for the third row. This third row is just gonna be a full board all the way across. I repeat this same pattern until I have filled up the card completely. You'll see here that my final board hangs over three of the edges instead of just the ends. Now if I had not already pre-cut that white cardstock mat, I probably would have just left it as is, but I did go ahead and trim off all those sides. And now because I cut off some of the inking on the edges, I just get that ink pad back out and go around the outside and then my wood panel floor is done. I did pull out my Misty to help me get my sentiment straight on my little red piece of cardstock. And because the cardstock is too small for me to use the magnet that comes with the Misty, I am making sure each time before I stamp that that left edge is aligned with the seven on the bottom ruler. That way if it wiggles around any, I can just place it right back there and know that is where I want my stamp to go. You'll see I used my embossing buddy there before I inked up and stamped my sentiment. And now I'm just gonna emboss that with white detail embossing powder. I did have some powder stick to where I didn't want it. I think I pressed down too hard on the stamp. So I just got out a brush there and just wiped that excess away. I wanted to put some fishtail ends on either side of my sentiment piece. So what I did was I just very gently folded that in half. I didn't do a hard crease in the middle. I just left it rounded. And then I snipped probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch into the center while it was still folded and then I opened it back up and cut in from both ends at an angle to that center point. That's just a quick easy way to get a fishtail. Now it's time to assemble the card. I start by matting my wood plank piece to that white piece of cardstock and then this gets adhered just down in the center of my card front. I'll then get out my big blue roll of foam tape for my sentiment strip and because this cardstock it's kind of cheap and it's a, a little bit warped from the embossing, I did put three rows of foam tape and then I stuck that down to the center of my card front. Now because my craft card base is a little bit lighter weight than what I usually use and because it might be hard to see the message inside, I got out another piece of white cardstock and added that last wooden plank to the bottom just to tie the front to the inside. And here is a look at the final card. Alrighty, it is time for my second card now and here are the main products that I'll be using. For my sentiment, I'm going to be using the Sweet and Sassy Stamps Friendship is a Blessing. I actually got this for free because I placed a $75 order. And the sentiment I'll be using, it says, when I count my blessings, I count you twice. I will be stamping that in Versamark and embossing it with gold detail embossing powder. For my embossing folder, I'll be using this old one from Cuddlebug called Leafy Branch. And then I also got out a piece of just white printer paper and I just roughly tore it into quarters by hand. You'll see later how I use that when I go to emboss on this little piece of vellum. For the rest of my card, I got out two pattern papers from the Wild Flourish stack. This back one is four and a quarter by five and a half and the floral is three and a half by four and three quarters. This piece of white cardstock here is just a small mat for the pattern paper. And finally, I got out two stitched circle dies and I'll be using this for my sentiment and a mat on my sentiment. 
I'm going to start this card by doing the stamping because I do need to do a little die cutting as well when I do my embossing. This piece of white cardstock that I'm stamping onto is actually the mat for the smaller piece of pattern paper. Because you will never see the center of this, this is a good way to make the most use of a piece of paper. Once the embossing powder was set, I got out my die cutter and my scotch blue removable tape and I centered that sentiment within the smaller of the circles that I got out. Now that scotch blue removable tape, not only does it keep the die in place when I'm doing the die cutting, but I can set that to the side and reuse it later. For my second circle, I'm actually going to do the same thing where I cut it out of the center of a piece that will be layered on the card. Now it's time to pull out the embossing folder. Because sometimes the sharp edges on these folders would cut through the vellum, I'm going to place the vellum on the opposite side from those and then put that piece of printer paper between the vellum and kind of that harsh or that sharp side. Here's a look at the piece when it's already embossed and you'll see that you can use either side whichever you prefer. Now that everything is cut and embossed, let's get this card put together. The pattern paper layer goes just flat onto the card front and you'll notice it does fill the entire space and then the smaller piece of pattern paper gets matted with the white cardstock. Now the reason I used the vellum was because it kind of mutes that real bold colorful pattern paper and allows the sentiment to stand out some. And here's a look at what the sentiment piece would look like against just the pattern paper background and against the muted side with the vellum. Because you can see adhesive through the vellum, I do want to try to hide that behind the elements that I'm going to be adhering onto it. So the first part there, I put some ATG behind where I want the sentiment to go, and then the sentiment goes on the card front with some Stampin' Up! dimensionals. Now I'm also going to pull in some enamel dots, and I'm going to use the larger one down in the bottom left so I can hide one of these glue dots behind it. Even after I put a glue dot behind it, the bottom right is still kind of flipping up a little bit. So I got out my art glitter glue. It has this really nice fine tip and I just put adhesive right behind some of the part that was white from the embossing. That just helps hold this down and you can't see the adhesive. And here's a look at card number two. All right, time for my third card. For this embossing folder, I will be using this Cuddlebug embossing folder. It is just dots and it is a larger size, so you could actually emboss an entire card front with this. For my sentiment, I'll be using another Kelly Create set and I'll be using the Be Still Sentiment. I will be die cutting that with some square stitch dies and I'll be stamping the sentiment once again with Versamark embossed with gold. And speaking of gold embossing, I almost forgot the embellishments I'm going to use on this card. These are, they're kind of a brushed gold pearl. I was actually trying to replace something in my stash that I'm almost out of, these teeny tiny metallic gold pearls. And this was the closest thing I could find online to them. But like I said, they're not completely metallic like mine. They're more of a brush gold, but I actually think they are super pretty. Now keep watching and I'm going to tell you how you can win a package of these for yourself. And then finally, these are the cardstock pieces that I'll be using for this card. And you might think that it looks like a lot of white. It's going to be a white on white on white card. Did you hear a little Matthew McConaughey there? But anyway, the great thing about the embossing folders is that I can have layer upon layer of white, but because of the texture that embossing folder adds, this is going to be okay to use. Now, first off, I have a white top fold A2 card base. And then I have a piece that will go on top of that that is three and three quarters by five inches. And then finally, I have a scrap of that same cardstock, and this is what I'll be stamping my sentiment on, and I will also be cutting a mat for the sentiment from this. The first thing I'm going to do for this card is stamp and emboss the Be Still sentiment. And I'm going to place this toward the top of my scrap because I do have another square that I have to cut out from the bottom portion. Thank you. 
Once that is all set, I pulled back out my cuddle bug and I used that same piece of scotch blue removable tape from earlier to place my square where I want it around my sentiment. And then you'll notice there too that I put the larger one at the bottom so I have a white mat for that. Now I'm going to emboss the larger piece of cardstock with that dots embossing folder. I just love the texture that that gives it. Off camera, I was playing with the layout a little bit and I decided that I wanted to cut a little white vine from that same cardstock. Because the glue does need to dry, I wanted to go ahead and get my sentiment block ready. I wanted the vine to be adhered to the white mat for the sentiment, but then I also wanted it to pop up on top of the sentiment piece itself. So I got back out my art glitter glue and added just a little bit of adhesive to the lower portion of the vine. And then I'm gonna set that to the side to dry. While that's drying, I got out my foam tape roll to add some adhesive to the back of my emboss piece. And you'll notice there that I put some extra in the center and that's just to keep that from kind of falling flat onto the card front. It just gives it that lift. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get the sentiment block ready. My vine is dry, so I'm gonna put adhesive on the back of the Be Still piece. And then I'm gonna move the vine onto the top of that and add a little glue and let that dry again. Once the sentiment was added to the card front, I then got out those gold pearls that I showed you earlier and I added five just randomly around the card. I did try to adhere them where there was an actual dot on the embossed piece. And here's a close up look for you. Thank you so much for watching this far into the video. I am going to tell you about the hidden giveaway, but I do hope that you're going to keep watching to see the final card that I'm going to make. If you are interested in winning one of these sets of pearls for yourself, here is how you can be qualified. First of all, you do need to be a subscriber to my channel. You need to be 18 years or older, and you need to live in the United States or have a mailing address in the United States. Now to enter to win, you're going to let me know in a comment below which card is your favorite from today and you have to include the hashtag, hashtag 4 on Friday. It must look exactly like you see it on screen because that is how I'm going to know who is interested in entering. You will have until Friday, April 24th at midnight to enter and then I will come back that next week and announce who the lucky winner was. One thing that I do require in your comment below, besides what I've already mentioned, is that you do not say anything about the giveaway. This is a hidden giveaway. I want the subscribers who are watching the whole video to be the ones who are eligible to enter. If you do mention the giveaway in any way, I will delete your comment and you'll be disqualified. Good luck in the drawing and now let's get on to the fourth card. And now it's time for my fourth card. For my embossing folder, I'm going to be using this set that I got at Michael's a couple years ago. It's a rainbow embossing folder and then it came with a matching rainbow stamp. I will be stamping and embossing the rainbow with Versamark and then with some detail black embossing powder. For the coloring, I'll be using my Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I got out number 20 red, number 50 yellow, number 40 green number 80 violet, I got out 303 shadow mauve for the cloud, and then my clear blender pen. For my sentiment, I'm gonna be using this old set from There She Goes Clear stamp sets, and I'll be using the You're Amazing. That will be stamped with VersaFine Onyx Black. Besides my card base for my paper, I got out a piece of white cardstock that is four and three quarters by five inches and then I got out a scrap of yellow that I cut to be just slightly bigger than that for a mat and then I have a scrap of Bristol smooth cardstock for my stamping and my coloring. 
I'm gonna start out this card by using my Misty again for the stamping, and I got out the piece that I'm gonna be embossing later. Because I want my sentiment actually on the card that's gonna be embossed, I do need to stamp it now, because later I won't be able to stamp it on that bumpy surface. So I aligned my folder where I thought it might be on the card stock, and then I put my stamp where I wanted it. Next, I'm gonna get my rainbow stamped and embossed. Now, I like to emboss my images just because I'm not that great about going outside the lines. So I ink that up, put my powder on, and then because I don't want those stars showing up on the final image, I did go ahead and just brush those off with a brush before I heat set the powder. Now, I could have cut those off later, but I just wanted to make sure they weren't there. Now I'm going to color. I am gonna let you watch the whole process for this image, but I will tell you that I am definitely not a pro. I started by using that shadow mauve marker and I just outlined the clouds. Then I got out my colorless blender and just blended that into the center. This gives just a little bit of color to those clouds. Whenever I think I might have too much color on the blender, you'll see that I wipe it on that paper towel to the right. Next, I'm gonna do the red. And because I want kind of a highlight in the center of my rainbow, I'm only gonna color part way in, and then I'm gonna get my blender and come in from the sides. And again, when I think I have too much of the color on there, I wipe it off on the paper towel because I do want a highlight, so I want no color on the marker for the center. I do not usually color on cards, but I have to say after coloring this adorable little rainbow, I want to buy and color all of the things. Let me know below your favorite cute stamp companies, kind of like this rainbow. I wanna give that rainbow some time to dry before I start touching it to cut it, so I got back out my stamped piece and I'm gonna go ahead and emboss that. Now, because I want the sentiment to be a specific place on the folder, I did use a little bit of my Scotch blue tape there to hold it down. Now, I will tell you, this piece cannot be reused. It did get torn up by all the sharp edges on the embossing folder. I don't have a die for this rainbow, so I just quickly cut it out by hand, trying to leave the same amount of white border all the way around the image. And now it's time to put this card together. I start by putting down the emboss piece, and because there's a, not a whole lot of surface area to adhere that to the yellow mat, I did put some extra adhesive on the back of that. These two layers get adhered straight down onto the card base with some more ATG, and then for my little rainbow, I'm gonna pull out my Stampin' Up dimensionals. I think I put three on the back of that, and then I'm gonna pop it up right above the You're Amazing. Now it's not quite done yet. I did pull out my clear epoxy shapes that a subscriber recently sent me. Thank you so much, Sue. And I added five of these to the background. And here's a look at my fourth and final card. I hope you enjoyed getting to see how I made each of my cards today. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. And now, don't forget to go check out Danny's blog post, which is linked below. Until my next video, I hope you're having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope that you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools that I use in the video, I do have some links in the description box.